this is Chris over at Quality Electronics again and today I'm going to be talking to you about how to use the remote control and operating certain interfaces for different manufacturers televisions. Okay, this here is Samsung LCD. It's one of the more common televisions that are being sold nowadays so it's a good one to talk about. Um, here is a remote control. Okay. And you'll see here you have the power, it's red as well. You have the source, remember how I said the input is going to be sometimes called source or TV video. Um, here you have the volume, you have the channel, and you have the cursors down here, just like the other remote control did. This is the OK button. So what we're going to do is see the menu button, we're going to push the menu button. Okay, you see the menu on this is very different. On the side here, you have labeled picture. Then you have sound, channel, setup, input, applications, and support. Support is where you're going to go if you have any problems with your Samsung. Say you want to upgrade the software like it says right there. When you're going through this menu, keep in mind to select anything, you're going to have to push the right arrow to get over to it. See how it highlights? It changed colors. The blue transferred over. So we're going to scroll down to software upgrade. When you click that, it'll tell you buy USB or buy online. What it means by online is when it's plugged into a landline or it's hooked up wirelessly. By USB, it's just a flash drive that you've programmed the software on already. Okay. Now, HD connection guide just helps you hook up your TV. Contact Samsung. If you have a problem, it's going to give you all the information you need to contact your warranty support center. Self-diagnosis will help you troubleshoot any of the functions that you're having difficulties with. Say, for instance, you hooked up your Blu-ray and it's not working correctly. So we're going to go back up to the applications. Media plays, for instance, if you have any external things like Netflix you can play through here, the Anet. Anet is what's called, uh, it's how it syncs to Samsung's own Blu-ray player. So if you have a Samsung Blu-ray player and a Samsung LCD player, they will connect with one another, allowing you to control both devices using this exact same remote control. Okay. All share is just something that you can talk to other people about and share information and or videos or media. Source list. It's just like the uh, other menu. You can go through and you can change the names. Okay. Here it's showing them grayed out because it's a smart TV and it senses that there's no devices plugged in. Here you'll see the PC, which will always be uh, selected as white because it does not know. And then it senses that there's uh, HDMI, a DVD hooked up, or, or a DVI hooked up right now. It's an HDMI cable right now. So let's get back into the menu. We'll scroll to this is the setup. This is where you plug your TV in for the first time again. You're going to want to change the time, the language, the security code so your kids won't get in changed in any of these accidentally. Then you can connect to your network through here. This is where you plug in your router to your TV either wirelessly or through a landline and then you connect it allowing what functions to do and what functions not to do. Your general setup will give you things like game mode. It will tell you a description of what it does. This mode accelerates game playing speed when using an external game console connected to the TV. Um, BD Wise is the same as the Anet. It's just not wireless. It will not go through your, your, your internet. Uh, the menu transparency, you can change this to dark, to white, you know, the melody. When you turn the TV on and off, you'll notice that Samsung's chime will happen. You can turn the melody off or you can turn it down. You can turn it down medium, low, off, high, whichever pleases you. Okay. Now let's go into, here's your antenna. Since there's no coax hooked up, you cannot program cable channels or antenna channels. You'll see though, it gives you the auto program, the clear scramble channels, channel list, and fine tune. Okay. Here's your, your sound, and here's your video options. Let's go with the video options first. You have dynamic. So dynamic being your brightest setting. 
then you have standard, natural, and movie. Movie is set up to watch uh, something at night, so it's not going to be so bright and won't hurt your eyes. Some people prefer natural because they think it gives you a better quality picture. Um, standard is something you can adjust yourself. You can adjust all of them, but it's best to adjust standard because it's factory settings. Here's your picture reset, so if you get anything mixed up, you just push this and it'll reset all your options. Okay, these are finer options. You have the screen size, changing the screen from 4x3, see how the black bars show up on the side, to 16x9, which fills it out completely. Okay, wide fit zooms the picture. It will cut off some of the side. I don't advise it because then you lose menus or scrolling news bars or other information. The color tone is just the temperature at which the colors are at. So there's usually a normal, cool, warm, and that's about it so far. Uh, digital noise filter, you don't need to worry about those. Film mode is just what type of film is usually being broadcast. Don't worry about that. Auto motion plus is your auto motion enhancer. So for instance, you like to watch sports. It will move faster or it will move slower, depending on what you have on it. I suggest you leave it on standard, unless you notice there's a problem, and then play with the settings. Maybe it'll take some of the blur in the picture away. Okay, let's back out of this. And by backing out, I'm pushing the return button right here. Okay. Advanced settings has a lot of the same features. You have your black tones, which is your contrast ratios. Your dynamic contrast is at medium. Now, contrast is your black to white ratio, your purest white to your purest black. Your white balance is there, but you have your flesh tones. Some people think that these LCDs don't look as natural as, say, a plasma does. So they give you options to change the flesh tones in it. Your red faces will, could be turned more natural to a whiter face. Edge enhancement will just try and make things a little sharper. I haven't noticed much of a difference. LED Motion Plus is like a regional backlight dimming. It'll try and turn some of the LEDs off around the outside of your TV to make the blacks blacker. It's just a contrast enhancement. Okay, Eco Solutions. Say you want to change some of the internal settings to be more energy efficient. It'll turn down your backlight, or it'll shut off after a certain time. Or if there's no signal to it, it will shut off immediately. Okay, here's your tint, your color, your sharpness, your brightness, your contrast, and your backlight. Your backlight is just your fluorescent tubes again. So let's turn this back to dynamic. We'll just the sound options now. You have SRS, theater surround. I'd say leave it on standard. If you usually can't hear, put it on clear voice. That's more treble for you. Okay. Now, you have the auto volume, which is changing from a TV show to a commercial. You'll notice that the sound is very drastic. It'll sometimes be extremely loud on the commercial. If you put this on, it tries to even it out, but it will make things quieter overall. Your speaker select, if you have a surround system, you can turn it off and you can select external speakers. But I just leave my speakers on. And let's see. You have. And then if you get any of the settings mixed up, you just push sound reset and you're all done. And that's it. And to change inputs on this one, you push the source button. You just select. That's all you do. So, that's that.